Hello there. Um, this video I'm going to show you how you can make your own personalised pendant using parametric smart objects that are available for Fluid Designer for 3D printing. Um, if you look at uh, the pentagonal pendant on the uh, screenshot there, um, if you look carefully it's actually made up of the letters E. There are five letter E's uh, rotated around the centre of this pendant. Now you can make uh, pendants of different shapes. You can have octagonal or square or rectangular pendants and you can use different letters of the alphabet to personalise your pendants. So um, what we want to do first of all is uh, we've got a fluid designer for 3D printing. So we're going to use a, a number of different components in here. Now if um, any um, categories are not listed here what you should always do is just click the group library button and that will just refresh the whole of this list and um, we're going to use a number of different um, objects to create this pendant. I'm going to use this uh, bezel um, I'm going to use a, a round bezel so um, if I just drag and drop that object onto the workspace um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this object here which is the bezel ring round and I'm going to just use the, the round gem to just see how that fits in the uh, pendant. So we're going to append these two objects from the bezel 10 millimeter uh, round um, file. And uh, I'm also going to use um, a Harrington font. Uh, and I'm going to use uh, the capital letter E. So I need to scroll down quite a bit, I think. Um, so I'm going to use this letter E here, this Harrington font, and um, I'm also going to use a pentagonal pendant, so if I just open up the pendants folder, um, quite a lot of different pendants on our system, and uh, we're going to use, let me see where it is, yeah, we're going to use this 35mm pentagonal pendant. As I just said in the introduction, you could uh, cr use a triangular pendant or a square pendant or a circular one or octagonal or hexagonal. doesn't matter which. Um, they, they, all, they can all be used and appended in the same way as we're going to show you here. So if I just go to uh, File and New. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by going to Harrington Fonts and I'm going to use the capital letter E. Now clearly you can use any of these fonts here to do this uh, same sort of style of pendant and uh, you could also use Arabic fonts, Hindi fonts, um, calligraphy fonts etc etc. So if I just drag and drop that object onto the workspace um, if I just look at the size of it first of all you can see it's about 15 millimeters tall and uh, what we're going to do essentially is to create a, a circle of these objects so in essence they're going to be about 30 millimeters across or slightly more um, so we're going to use a, a 35 millimeter um, pendant to wrap around them. now um, what I want to do is I want to offset this object slightly and just put it below the center cursor center there and then I'm going to rotate it. Now if I just uh, drag the Z here, you can see I'm just rotating it about the centre of the object at the moment. That's not what I want to do. I want to rotate it about this centre. So if I just set Z back to zero, the rotation of Z back to zero at the moment, what I want to do is to move the centre of this object to the cursor, the very centre of my screen there. And I can do that by going to Tools, Object Tools, and set the origin to the cursor and you'll see that the origin jumps there and when I change Z now you can see my letter E rotates about that new center now in uh, mathematical terms it's 360 degrees to go all the way around a circle so that's quite an important number to, to use because if you want to make two copies of uh, this letter E inside your pendant, you need to rotate one of them around 180 degrees. If you wanted to make four copies, you'd need to rotate them about 90 degrees. I want to make five copies, so the value I need in here is 72 degrees. So I want to have one here, 
one at 72 degrees, another one, another 72 degrees around, and then another one, etc. Now, in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to place a special object at the centre of the screen to rotate this around. And the special object that we use is called an empty. And uh, so if I select empty and plane axes, that places an object at the very centre of the screen. And you can probably just make it out there as those yellow lines. And if I look in the outliner window here, you can see it's called an empty. Now I like to rename that as angular rotation rather than leave the rather abstract name empty. Because we're going to rotate our letter E about this angular rotation object. So what I need to do here is to set this value to 72 degrees. And you can see that the object itself moves. Now the reason that I'm doing it in Z is that the blue arrow is the Z axis. And that's the one that I'm going to rotate it around. I'm going to rotate around the Z axis. The red arrow is X, the green arrow is Y, the blue is Z. So if I just go to view and top view now, so I've got my E, and if I select it again, my object, I want to rotate it about that angular rotation object. And the way we do that is we use a modifier. So if I click on the modifier icon in the properties panel, I want to use what's called an array modifier. Now you can see that by default, when I select a ray modifier, we get a count of 2, which I can change to 3 and 4, etc. And we've also got this box ticked here, which is what's called the relative offset. Now I don't want to use the relative offset. I want to use that angular rotation object that I placed in the mirror, in the center there. So I tick this box here, and uh, if I just scroll down past all the cross sections, um, and select angular rotation, you can see that my object rotates. Now, it's not touching at the moment, it's not close to the centre, it's going off centre, and that's because of this value here needs to either be set at zero, you can see as I move down to zero, it pulls the object back in, or if you just remove the tick here, that will create the effect that I want. So what I'm doing here is rotating the letter E 72 degrees, another 72 degrees, another 72 degrees, and another 72 degrees. And so what I'm getting there is a nice pattern, an even pattern around 360 degrees. And we could have done this with a count of 6 if we change the angular rotation to 60 degrees. If we change that to 60 degrees, we would need 6 of these objects. But we're going to stick with just 5. So the way to get this nice symmetrical pattern is to choose the right angle compared to the number of objects that you create around. Now you can see there, um, if I view this from a different angle, this object, this parametric smart object, has got a certain thickness to it. And if I just click on the curve icon over here, we can see what the cross section of this object is. It's one millimeter thick, one millimeter there, by two millimeters deep. So if I actually wanted to change that and make it thicker, I could do quite easily here just by changing the cross section. Um, I'm going to actually leave that at 2. That's the kind of default size, if you like. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to put a pentagon um, pendant around the outside of this. And I showed you that earlier, and it's in pendants. And um, so it's one of these objects here. So it's the uh, pentagon object. Now I don't want to want the 10 millimeter one. I'm going to need larger than that. I'm going to need 35 millimeters. And I can see that by just using the ruler here. I can measure this. So that, as you can see, is about 37 millimeters there. So 10 millimeters is going to be too small. So I need the larger pentagon one. I need the 35 millimeter one. Uh, which is further down here. Now I'm not going to drag and drop this onto the workspace. I need to append it from the menu. I'm just showing you the object I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this 35mm pentagonal pendant and I need to append it. So if I go to File and Append and what I need to do is just go up through the menu system until you get to the Groups folder. 
and then I need to go to the pendants folder and I want the 35 millimeter uh, pentagonal pendant and we always append the object so it's the 35 millimeter pentagonal pendant and if I just append that from the library you can see that that fits around my uh, circle of ease or, or well, as you can see it's a little bit too large at the moment so what we need to do is to either resize or reposition the E so we could move the E closer to the center um, or we could make it slightly smaller now I'm going to make it slightly smaller and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the snap first of all and uh, to make anything smaller in uh, fluid designer for 3d printing we need to press the S key on the keyboard so if I press letter S you can see I can move the letter E and I want it so that it just touches the edge of the pendant because I want some overlap as I do that. Now you can see as we do that we get some funny things happen to the other letter E's and what's happening there um, is that I've changed the scale factor of my object. I've changed it from a scale factor of 1, a vector of 1 down to 0.948 I've scaled it down so what I need to do is I need to reset this back to 1 and we do that by holding down the control key on the keyboard and pressing the letter A and applying the scale and you can see what will happen as I do that all the other letter E's reposition themselves and their thicknesses resize as well so that's something that's very important to do in fluid designer when you scale a curved object. Our Harrington font is a curve and we can see that by the curve icon here and the fact that we have a curve icon in the properties window. So when you scale a curve always reset them. Now you can see that my pendant thickness is also um, 1 by 2 um, so if you did actually want to change that, if you wanted to make the pendant thickness slightly thicker than the letter E's you could do or you could leave it the same thickness. I'm going to leave it the same thickness there. Now what I want to do is I want to put a gem in the centre and uh, if I just click on group library here that will refresh this list. So I'm going to use this bezel setting here and I'm going to use the round bezel. So I'm going to append the two objects I showed you earlier into my workspace here. So if I go to file and append, just go up through the menu system until you get to the groups folder and it's gem settings bezel that I'm going to use and I'm going to add the round bezel. And it's always the objects that you want and I don't want any of these cross sections. I want the bezel ring round which I showed you earlier and if I hold down the shift key and I want the round gem as well so if I append those from the library that brings them into the uh, current workspace here now what I need to do is I need to rotate these two objects and I want to rotate them about the x-axis so that they are in the same plane as my um, pendant I can do that by pressing R on the keyboard for rotate X to limit the rotation about the X axis and then type 90 degrees and you can see that that rotates um, the um, bezel ring. I also want to rotate the gem itself so I need to highlight the gem and again the same thing R on the keyboard X to limit the rotation to the X axis and 90 to rotate it. Now the gem isn't uh, in the center so uh, if I just go to view and top, um, with the gem highlighted what I can do is if I just go to cursor and snap the selected object to the cursor it will put it right in the center for me. And I could, um, let's see, what I can then do is I need to reposition uh, the bezel. Um, so if I just pull the bezel down there until it meets the pendant itself and uh, if I just select the gem and move the gem up you can see that I can position my gem in the center there. Now what you need to decide at this stage is exactly what size gem you're going to use. Now if I just uh, restrict the view of the gem here you can see my letter E there. Now the nice thing about having the E inside of the um, 
the gem ring there is that it will act as a backstop for the gem when you place it in. Um, if however you've got a different size gem, so let's say that you had a gem that's say 8 millimeters, you can always resize this. So you press S on the, make sure that the uh, gem is highlighted and uh, you could press S on the keyboard to scale it and 0 0.8 will make the gem size 8 millimeters and we can always double check that in the properties panel so x and uh, z are eight millimeters here now if you do that you must obviously resize the uh, bezel ring so again s on the keyboard and 0 0.8 now the bezel ring is in fact a curve so you must always remember to do Control a and apply the scale and you'll see the thickness of the bezel ring change slightly as you did that um, now we clearly need to reposition that again because it's pushed it through the bottom as we have scaled it so we need to move it up. Now the exact height of this is going to depend very much on the actual gem itself. I've just got a very flat gem there. You would actually need to measure the height of the gem that you've got that you're going to place here. If you knew the height you could set it here and then what you would have to do is adjust it until it just fits on the um, back of the pendant there so it just touches the back of the pendant there and you would then adjust your bezel ring to the sorry the the bezel ring to the appropriate not got the right object here let me select it over here yeah uh, adjust the bezel ring to the right height depending upon the gem that you're using uh, and how much you want to crimp it in. Okay, so um, now in terms of uh, 3D printing this object, we can't print it as it is at the moment. Now we're not going to print the gem, so I'm going to delete that. So X on the keyboard to delete the gem. Um, now you've got to be careful here about joining these objects together before you join them together you're going to need to change them to meshes if we try and join them together at the moment um, it could it will mess up the um, shape that we've currently got what we need to do is to convert this uh, set of ease this rotation of ease to a mesh first of all before we join anything together because that will apply the modifier the modifier is over here this array um, so if I go to Tools, Object Tools and convert that to a mesh, the Array modifier will be applied now. If you don't do that, if you just join them together, it will all get messed up. And similarly with the um, pentagonal pendant, I need to go to Tools, Object Tools and convert that to a mesh. And also with my bezel ring, once I'm happy with the position of it, convert that to a mesh. And then you can hold down the shift key and highlight the pentagon and highlight the uh, circle of ease as well as the ring. And if you just join all those together, you'll get one object. And um, the only thing that you need to do now is to send this to net well is to save it as an stl or an obj file so i'll go to file and export export it as a wavefront object uh, to the desktop and i'm going to call it harrington font e and export that um, and then you must go to netfab basic to repair this particular object if you don't do that you won't have a printable file format now because we've used parametric smart objects to create this pendant when we send this to uh, netfab basic it should be able to repair any problems now there will be quite a few problems with this object as you'll see in a second um, once it's actually saved it and once i've imported it into netfab um, you will see that there will be some problems but you know because this is a parametric smart objects that we've used i'm pretty confident netfab will repair it so if i go to netfab basic go to project and open and uh, just go to the desktop and i want the harrington font e object and uh, just open that up from the desktop and just give it a second to load it
okay so um, netfab's actually loaded that now and you can see i've got a warning red triangle here but don't worry just click on the uh, repair icon on the toolbar there and uh, if we just click update you can see there are some holes in the object and some border edge problems but don't worry about that just click automatic repair and execute it and just allow netfab to repair this so i'm pretty confident this is going to work um, and if we click on update you can see the border edge the orientation and the holes have all been repaired so we just click apply repair and remove the old part and so there is our uh, pentagonal pendant with some letter E's and uh, a, a ring there to put a, um, a gem in. And, you know, you don't have to make a pentagonal pendant. You could make a round one, octagonal, etc., etc. And you can have different sized gems and you can place different letters of the alphabet in. So the only thing to do now is to go to part, export the part as a wavefront object. Uh, save it as Harrington font E. Um, now we may just get another error here. Yeah, we've got a manifold edges problem here, but don't worry again, just click optimize. And uh, NetFab again will just make some further repairs. And uh, when we once we get the green tick, that's it. That's NetFab now done all of its repairing. You've now got an object which is um, a printable mesh. So that's it for this particular video. Thank you.